Good evening, everybody. In a matter of eight hours, the Kalamazoo County Sheriff says deputies fielded 1,000 contacts during a child sex trafficking operation. Deputies say these three men all took the bait and tried to meet up with a 15-year-old girl at an Ashtamo hotel. All three ended up meeting sheriff's deputies instead. As News Channel 3's Maria Serrano reports, that includes a Western Michigan University police officer. A former WMU police officer with his head down. Abraham Hunky appears in Kalamazoo County Court, accused of trying to have sex with a teenage girl. The defendant, a WMU police officer, arranged to meet what he thought was a 15-year-old girl for the purpose of having sex in exchange for money. Western Michigan University's president sending a statement to the WMU community today, calling it a disturbing and serious matter. A high bond is requested as the consequences of his actions as a police officer abusing the public trust and committing a crime are severe. Suicide risk and flight risk a common concern uh, given the nature of the crime. At the same time Hunkies faced a judge, Kalamazoo County Sheriff Richard Fuller spoke to reporters denouncing human trafficking and condemning those who are actively seeking for sex with children. If you're one of these people and you're in Kalamazoo County, we are going to uh, actively seek you and we will arrest you. Sheriff Fuller says operations where Hunky was caught are part of a new effort for his office to crack down on human trafficking cases. But what I would call it is an operation and uh, that uh, we are out here fighting uh, human oppression. He says the two arrests include Nathan Ruzick, a Matawan truck driver, and Aaron bauer Gimond, a 27-year-old nursing assistant hired about two months ago at a Bronson nursing and rehab facility in Matawan. Bronson Healthcare System spokesperson says he is now suspended pending investigation. Knowing these are leaders in the community, what's your response to this? Uh, it was made uh, painfully uh, clear to me that people of uh, all uh, working ranks are involved in this. According to WMU, Hunky worked as an officer at the university for 10 years. He's due back in court along with the other two, specs, the other two suspects in a couple of weeks. Tonight, some Michiganders are asking the same question they did during the death of George Floyd. Could this have been prevented? Our state lawmakers did take steps to address that question last year, but that issue has since stalled. Our political reporter, Rachel Louise Just, tells us tonight about unfulfilled proposals in Lansing that are back in the spotlight tonight after Leoya's death. You know, we do all these BS bills in this place about police but we never do any that actually matter. Democratic senators in Lansing didn't mince words on the floor today as they talked about Patrick Leoya's death. I have no idea when the next person is gonna die and we have to learn their name. Top of mind for some, a package of 12 bills introduced in May 2021 on the anniversary of George Floyd's death by a group of bipartisan senators. The goal was to address shortcomings the legislature identified with Michigan's law enforcement. Shortcomings some criminal justice experts point to in the case of Patrick Leoya. SB 482 would require bias and de-escalation training be developed for police departments. SB 480 would create a duty for other officers to intervene if they see another officer using serious force. SB 481 would require police departments to have a verbal warning and use every alternative before deadly force. Not one of the 12 bills have received a single vote in the 11 months since they were introduced. What's the point of introducing those bills if they were to the same committee? Isn't that a good question? The window for them is shrinking um, and you know, we thought we were going to be able to make some changes. And I believe there is some bipartisan support for them. Um, and so uh, it has been frustrating to know that we've had that we had really good committee hearings. Um, we've had a lot of robust discussion um, and it's time for action. Now bill sponsor Erica Geis is asking if the bills would have made a difference. If we'd had the de-escalation training already signed into law so that it was something that was already ongoing and a best practice within that department. Um, I think we might have had, there might have been a very different outcome to the interaction. Jennifer Kobina Dungy, an associate professor of criminal justice at MSU, says laws are already in place to prevent what happened to Leoya. And while they might help, he was still killed. 
policies and laws does not necessarily mean or guarantee that there will be equity and equality and justice for uh, for individuals, for particularly marginalized people. None of the Republican senators who sponsored bills in the package agreed to an interview today. But Senator Michael McDonald's office sent me a statement saying he looked forward to helping improve public safety. In Lansing, Rachel Louise Just. Now, just moments ago, we heard from Senate Majority Leader Mike Shirky. He says of Leoya's death, quote, making sure the police charged with protecting our communities are well-trained and qualified is not a partisan matter. Republicans and Democrats have worked together to provide funding in the state budget to train police in de-escalation techniques, and we will continue to pursue bipartisan measures that utilize best policing practices and provide greater transparency, transparency and accountability. Patrick Leoya, Patrick Leoya, Patrick Leoya. Thanks for joining us tonight on News Channel 3 Live at 11. I'm Trisha McCauley. Protests continue in Grand Rapids tonight over the deadly police shooting of 26-year-old Patrick Leoya. Police released dash cam, body cam, and cell phone video of the shooting earlier this week leaving many in the community outraged and demanding justice. News Channel 3's Maria Serrano is joining us live now in downtown Grand Rapids to tell us if the protests are still going on there tonight, Maria. It's been a tense environment to say the least. I can tell you after six hours, it looks like now, finally things are wrapping up, but dozens of protesters and demonstrators are still here making their voices heard. I can tell you we've seen protesters with guns drawn wearing tactical gear. We've seen some instigate confrontations with Michigan State Police, while others were simply calling on the crowd to move on. They say they're sick and tired and seek justice for Leoya's killing. They're demanding the name of the officer to be released and a criminal charge against him. I've talked to people from Detroit and a group from Minneapolis who say they've come here looking for answers. This is tragic, you know, enough is enough. It always has been enough. And this is why the people are fed up and we're out here. Protesters have blocked off several streets here in downtown. This all starting at 5 p.m. And finally, it looks like things are coming now to an end. We saw several confrontations uh, with Michigan State Police and protesters. But thankfully, uh, it looks like everything was peaceful tonight. But again, very tense.